Dear students, this is your teacher Neela Mehlawat, and today we will de- do another interesting topic that is angiosperms. Dear students, this is the last topic of this chapter. Now, before this chapter, uh, this part, we have done. We have talked about the gymnosperms, and in this particular video, we'll be talking about the angiosperms. See, I have. Uh, I'm showing you a picture. You can identify these are all your angiosperm plants. Like as you can see here, this is a banana plant. You have apples, lotus, okay, China rose, then simple roses. All these plants they come under the category of angiosperms. The another name of the angiosperm is flowering plants. They are also called as flowering plants. Means. the plants which bear flowers okay so the plants which bear flowers they are termed as angiosperms okay they are referred to as angiosperms now dear students in these flowering plants the pollen grains and the ovules as you can see in the picture the pollen grains and the ovules these are the pollen grains and these are the ovules they are present in the specialized structures which are referred to as the flowers and in angiosperms their seeds are also present inside the fruit as you can see here the seeds are also present inside the fruit so this is the special characteristic of angiosperms that the seeds are present inside the fruits as well as the pollen grains and ovules they are present in the specialized structures referred to as the flowers so flowers are basically the reproductive parts of the flower okay flower is basically the reproductive part of the plant now angiosperm dear students they are exceptionally large plants and they are present in wide variety of habitats they are small in size and they are also tallest trees like eucalyptus so their size ranges from small like wolfia plant to the tall trees like eucalyptus that may cover 100 meters okay and these plants they basically provide food fuel medicine medicines to human beings now these plants dear students they can be classified into two categories one is monocotyledons and second is dicotyledons monocotyledons means the seed has single part okay that uh, the plants which have single cotyledon as you can see here it is having the single cotyledon so such plants they will be called, called as monocots and if the plant if the seed has two parts as you can see here the seed has two portions two parts these are called as dicotyledons these are called cotyledons okay there are two cotyledons in the seed okay there are two cotyledons in the seed and thus they are referred to as dicot plants and such seeds they are referred to as dicotyledonous seeds now dicotyledon seeds basically or you can say dicots they have two cotyledons they have reticulate venation if you look at this see if you look at the see you can say the leaves they have reticulate venation and their flowers are tetramerous or pentamerous flowers means the flower either has the multiples of the flower has petals in the multiples of 4 or the 5 right like they can be the floral parts like 5 25 uh, you can say 20 so the uh, petals they are the multiples of 4 or the 5 while the monocots as you can see here there is a single cotyledon and they have parallel venation and their floral parts or you can say their petals they are the multiples of 3 okay they are the multiples of the three component now coming to the flower again students in a flower there are basically two main parts stamen and the pistil the stamen is referred to as the male part okay the stamen is referred to as a male part while pistil is referred to as the female part so a flower has two parts stamen and the pistil if both the parts they are present in the same flower we call such a flower as bisexual flower if stamen and pistil both are present in the same flower then we call this flower as a bisexual flower otherwise if any one of them is present like stamen is present or the pistil is present then in that case we call it as unisexual flower okay we call it as unisexual flower okay everyone i hope this is clear to everybody 
Okay. Now, as I talked, uh, uh, as I've spoken to you, stamen. Stamen is a male part of the plant. Now, let let's highlight this. Just look, magnify the structure, and let's understand. Stamen basically has two parts. This part is called the pollen, and this lower part is called the filament. Okay. Stamen has two parts: the pollen and the filament. While the pistil has three parts. This one is this part is called the stigma. This long part is called the style. and this part portion is called the ovary okay stamen has two parts the pollen and the filament while the stigma has uh, while the pistil has three parts stigma style and the ovary okay now within this anther right if we are talking about this anther now now let's focus on the anther itself now this anther basically consists of pollen grains or we can say the pollen mother cells what do we they contain pollen mother cells where are pollen mother cells present in the pollen okay in this part which anther this part is referred to as anther this anther contains the pollen mother cells okay this anther contains the pollen mother cells as you can see here this is the pollen mother cells okay or we can say microsporangium is present and these are the microspore mother cells what do we call them as microspore mother cells what do we call them microspore mother cells the another name of microspore mother cells they are also called as pollen mother cells as i was talking about pollen mother cells so inside the pollen grain there are pollen mother cells or microsporangium now in the microsporangium there are pol uh, spore microspore mother cells okay now these microspore mother cells dear students they will undergo the process of meiosis okay they will undergo the process of meiosis and it will produce four microspores so your we can say that the pollen mother cells okay these pollen mother cells or microspore mother cells they contain double number of chromosomes so they are diploid and they will undergo the meiosis and they will form four microspores and these four microspores they will be haploid as they contain half number of chromosomes right they contain half number of chromosomes and these microspores they will form the pollen grains what they will form they will form the pollen grains so first of all what happens the pollen mother cells or we can say the microspore mother cells they will undergo the process of meiosis and because of meiosis the four microspores will be formed and the, these four microspores they will form the pollen grains right everyone and this complete process occurs in the in the anthers okay this complete process will occur in the anthers now coming to the female part we know dear students female sex organ is called as pistil or we can call it as carpel so pistil or carpel it is the female sex organ okay and we know it is basically made up of three parts stigma style and the ovary okay now inside the ovary ovules are present okay inside the ovary ovules are present and in the ovule as you can see here in the ovule megaspore mother cell is present i told you in ovary okay ovary ke andar aapke ovules present honge so in the ovary ovules will be present and in the ovule there is a megaspore mother cells okay there is one megaspore mother cells now this megaspore mother cell dear students this will undergo meiosis this megaspore mother cells will undergo the process of meiosis and it will form megaspores what it will form it will form the megaspores theek hai ovary ke andar aapke ovules present hai ओव्यूल के अंदर आपका एक सिंगल मेगास्पोर मदर सेल है सिंगल मदर स्पोर जो आपका प्रेजेंट है वो डिप्लॉयड है इट इज डिप्लॉयड नाउ दिस मेगास्पोर मदर सेल इट विल अंडरगो द प्रोसेस ऑफ मियोसिस एंड इट विल फॉर्म 
four mega spores and these mega spores they will be haploid in nature okay now out of these four mega spores or three mega spores they will degenerate and one mega spore will form the embryo sac okay and the one mega spore it will form the embryo sac in the embryo sac as you can see there will be seven cells and eight nuclei theek hai iske andar aapke jo hai seven nucleus present honge seven cell present honge and eight nucleus will be present i'm again again repeating dear students in the embryo sac it the embryo sac will divide further and it will arrange itself into seven cells and eight nucleus stage and on the top there will be three antipodal cells in the center like this are this these are your three antipodal cells having the three nuclei three antipodal cells three nucleus in the center this central portion is called a central cell okay the central portion is called a central cell and the central cell will have two nuclei and they are called as polar nuclei and at the bottom at the basal end there is one egg and two synergids will be present so in total there are seven cells but eight nucleated stage will be present okay is it clear everyone okay now what happens basically once the pollen grains they mature in the anther there is a formation of pollen grains if you remember now this pollen grain it will be released in the air in the water okay and then it will reach the stigma of the ovary it will reach the stigma of the pistil okay this portion which we called as the stigma so pollen grains they will reach the stigma once they reach the stigma they will start forming a pollen tube okay this is the formation of pollen tube as you can see here this brown structure there is a formation of pollen tube okay through this pollen tube the male gametes they will reach the egg now there is there are two eggs which will be present here okay there will be two male gametes that will be present suppose one is this second one is this so the first male gamete okay first male gamete it will fuse with the first it will fuse with the egg and this fusion will be called as syngamy okay this fusion will be called as syngamy okay the pollen grains they will reach the stigma once they reach the stigma they will absorb moisture and there will be there will be a formation of pollen tube now in the pollen tube there will be two male gametes the first male gamete will reach the uh, egg and it will fuse with the egg and this step will be called as syngamy the second male gamete will fuse with the two pollen nuclei as you can see in the center these are the two pollen nuclei so the second male gamete it will fuse with the two pollen nuclei and this fusion is called as triple fusion what do we call as triple fusion so this fusion will be called as triple fusion so the first step is syngamy what is the first step called the first step is called syngamy and the second step is called the triple fusion since there are two steps this process is called as double fertilization okay since there are two steps what do we call this as we call it as double fertilization so in case of angiosperms in case of flowering plants there is double fertilization okay what do we call it as there is double fertilization clear now once there is a double fertilization so see we know egg will fuse egg plus first male gamete egg and first male gamete they will fuse and this process will be called as syngamy and this will result in the formation of a zygote so the fusion of egg with the first male gamete will result in the formation of a zygote while while so syngamy will result in zygote and triple fusion because of triple fusion that is the two polar nuclei they will fuse with the second male gamete and this will result in the formation of primary endosperm nucleus okay this is called primary endosperm nucleus okay everyone what do we call it as primary endosperm 
nucleus. So fusion of egg and first male gamete it will form the zygote while fusion of second male gamete and the two polar nuclei it will form primary endosperm nucleus. Now this zygote will then develop to form the embryo while this primary endosperm nucleus will form the endosperm. What it will form? It will form the endosperm. Okay. Zygote will develop to form the embryo and the pen will develop to form the endosperm. Now when there is a growth of the embryo. Okay. Now the growth of the embryo will start. Then this endosperm it will provide food to the developing embryo. Okay. This will provide food to the developing embryo. Rest other parts the synergers the antipodal cells these all de degenerate after the fertilization okay these all will degenerate after the fertilization synergids antipodal cells they will degenerate now once there is a fertilization now what will happen the ovary will turn into a fruit okay once there is a fertilization so ovary will form the fruit okay ovary will form fruit and ovules they will form seeds what the ovules will form they will form seeds so ovary will turn into fruit and the ovules they will turn into seed i hope this much is clear everyone is there any doubt now okay so let's continue very nice let's continue now coming to the life cycle of an angiospermic plant okay let's come to the life cycle let's understand this now let's start with this this plant okay plant is diploid this is angiospermic plant it is called a sporophyte sporophyte means it is diploid okay so in the plant there uh, it will bear the flowers the plant will bear the flowers and in the flowers there will be male male part and the female part the male part will be called the stamen and the female part will be called the pistil or the carpel okay now the male part will contain the anther as you can see this upper portion this is called the anther this portion is called the anther okay in the anther there will be microsporangium the microsporangium will undergo the process of meiosis it will form the microspores okay so the microsporangium is 2n microspores is n okay flower will contain the and uh, you can say the stamen stamen contains anther anther has microsporangium cells microsporangia they are diploid then they will undergo the process of meiosis and divide to form the microspores now microspores they will develop to form the pollen grains okay now in the likewise here also you will find that the ovary or you can say uh, the pistil or the carpel it will contain it, it contains ovary in the ovary there is ovules in the ovules there is megasporangium cells the megasporangium cells contain a megaspore mother cell the megaspore mother cells when undergo the process of meiosis and there is net result formation of an egg okay now this microspore it will land the pollen grain uh, the pollen grain containing the two male gametes it will land on the flower Okay, it will land on the flower and then there are two gametes. There is a formation of pollen tube. First male gamete will fuse with the egg. Second male gamete will fuse with the pollen nuclei. And this will result in the formation of zygote. Zygote will form the embryo. And this embryo will again form the sporophyte. So we can say there is uh, in this life cycle we have the gametophytic phase as well as the sporophytic phase. Sporophytic phase means wherever the plant has double number of chromosomes okay and wherever it has half number of chromosomes that is called the gametophytic generation like egg has half number of chromosome uh, pollen grain is half number of chromosomes so since here you can say microspores yahan se dekhiye aapke microsporangium jab divide hota hai tab aapka half the microspores they are the first cells that contain haploid structure egg also contains haploid structure and this particular portion it contains the diploid that is double number of chromosomes so they will be con considered as sporophytic generation i hope the life cycle of an angiosperm is clear everyone okay if there is any doubt anything that you want to know you can ask me or you can send your questions to me to me on personally
now coming to the next topic which is uh, again a very important one that is the plant life cycle and the alternation of generations now before we come to the uh, actual uh, you can say life cycle let's understand a very basic life cycle okay let's understand a very basic life cycle so that you can easily distinguish now let's uh, we know that the plant is referred to as a sporophytic phase plant is having diploid phase so that is called the sporophytic phase and sporophytic phase means it has double number of chromosomes okay then this sporophytic phase it will lead to the formation of spores and because of the process of meiosis so a uh, sporophytic phase will form the spores which are haploid so spores are haploid sporophytic phase has diploid now from these spores gametophytes will develop there is a male gametophyte there is a female gametophyte so this is called as gametophytic phase it is also referred to as haploid now male gametophyte and the female gametophyte they will bear the male gametes and the female gametes right then these male gametes female gametes they will fuse to form the zygote and again the diploid structure is restored and from the zygote again sporophytic phase will develop so we uh, we have to highlight two things here wherever there is a haploid stage that means it is a gametophytic stage कहीं पर भी जहाँ पर भी आपका हाफ नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम्स प्रेजेंट है मीन्स वो आपका गेमेटोफिटिक फेस है और जहाँ पर भी आपका डिप्लॉयड है क्रोमोजोम नंबर दैट मीन्स इट इज़ अ स्पोरोफिटिक फेस सो वी हैव टू कीप इन अ माइंड दिस इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम इवन फ्रॉम द नीट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू हैप्लॉयड स्टेज मीन्स गेमेटोफिटिक्स जनरेशन डिप्लॉयड स्टेज मीन्स स्पोरोफिटिक वन okay so i can say that in the life cycle of a plant there are two phases one is sporophytic phase second is gametophytic phase okay now let's come to the actual cycles the first life cycle that we have is a haplontic life cycle haplontic as you see the name suggest haplontic haplontic means haploid means half number of chromosomes so which phase is called as haploid which phase is called haploid yes the gametophytic phase is referred to as haploid okay gametophytic phase is the haploid one so in haplontic life cycle the duration of the gametophytic phase is longer while the duration of diploid phase that is sporophytic phase is shorter as you can see here theek hai jo aapka gametophytic phase hai wo uski duration zyada hoti hai aur jo aapka diploid phase hai sporophytic phase uski duration kam hoti hai as you can see here there is a zygote zygote is diploid it will undergo the process of meiosis and it will form the spores the spores are haploid so from here your haploid phase will start that is your gametophytic phase will start now these spores they will form the male gametophyte and the female gametophyte the male gametophyte will produce male gamete female gametophyte will produce female gamete so the process of production of gametes is called gametogenesis okay is it okay gametogenesis clear everyone gametogenesis means formation of gametes so gametophyte will form the gametes and this process will be called as gametogenesis then there is fusion of these gametes which will be called as syngamy so once there is a fusion again zygote will be formed so this life cycle will continue but in this phase your haploid phase that is your gametophytic phase it is of longer duration while the sporophytic phase which is diploid it is of short duration okay so this kind of life cycle is termed as haplontic and many algae such as your volvox pyrogyra and chlamydopsis they all represent this life cycle okay they have haplontic life cycle now coming to the next that is diplontic life cycle just uh, just focus on the word just name of this plant diplontic diplontic means diplontic diplontic means diploid phase and which phase is diploid the sporophytic phase is diploid so diplontic life cycle means here the duration of sporophytic phase will be longer in comparison to the gametophytic phase okay 
So as you can see, this, this blue portion indicates the duration of the sporophytic phase, while this pink portion indicates the formation of, indicates the duration of haplontic phase or haploid part. So sporophyte, they are diploid, then it will uh, undergo the process of meiosis, Gamete, gametophyte will be formed, spores will be formed, the spores will generate the gametophytes, the, from the gametophytes, gametes will be formed, the process is called gametogenesis. The fusion of gametes will be called syngamy and again there is a formation of zygote and zygote will lead to the production of sporophyte again. Okay, so here your diploid phase is of longer duration while, while the you can say the spore, uh, sorry the sporophytic phase is of longer duration while the gametophytic phase it is of shorter duration and this life cycle is very very common in case of gymnosperm and the angiosperm. Now, in addition to this, there is an alga which is called fucus and that also belongs to, uh, you can see that also exhibits the diplontic life cycle. Okay, this also exhibits the diplontic life cycle. Right, everyone? Okay. Then comes the third which is referred to as haplodiplontic life cycle. Haplodiplontic life cycle. Okay haplodiplontic life cycle. Now here basically there is a ratio of 40-60 or there is a ratio of 60-40. So your two phases that is your uh, you can say your gametophytic phase and the sporophytic phase they exhibit a ratio of 40-60 or 60-40. Okay the duration could be uh, in the ratio of 40-60 or 60-40. Now here both the phases are multicellular but they differ in, in, in the dominant phase like in case of bryophytes the gametophytic phase is of longer duration while uh, the sporophytic phase it is of shorter duration while in case of pteridophytes the main phase is sporophytic phase means the sporophytic phase is of longer duration in comparison to the gametophytic phase and as you can see in, in the picture also sporophyte will form the uh, spores spores then uh, grow into form a gametophyte Gametophyte will then result in the formation of gametes, gametogenesis and again there is a fusion of gametes which is called syngamy. Now if you look at this, this blue portion indicates your sporophytic phase and your pink portion indicates your, uh, you can say gametophytic phase. So here your gametophytic phase is longer. So we can say this, uh, the picture depicts a bryo, uh, the life cycle of a bryophyte. In pterodophytes, uh, the sporophytic phase will be longer while the gametophytic phase will be shorter okay everyone okay now you always remember that this sporophyte it's basically uh, you can say in case of pteridophytes pteridophytes the diploid sporophyte is uh, is dominant it is independent it is photosynthetic vascular plant and it alternates with a multicellular or uh, you can say multicellular sporophytic autotrophic independent short-lived haploid gametophyte. So such patterns they are referred to as haplodiplontic life cycle and it is very very common very very common in very common in ectocarpus polysiphonia these are the two you can say algas which exhibit the haplodiplontic life cycle. What the, can you name the two examples ectocarpus and polysiphonia ectocarpus and polysiphonia so ectocarpus and polysiphonia they exhibit this life cycle this life cycle that is haplodiplontic okay so we can say there are three types of life cycles first is uh, haplontic life cycle second is diplontic life cycle and the last is haplodiplontic life cycle so with this we finish our topic dear students. So your homework for today is that you got to make notes of this topic and you have to thoroughly read the page numbers 40 to 43. And since we have completed the chapter, you will also complete the NCRT questions of this chapter. And if there is any doubt dear students, anything that you, you need to discuss, you can discuss with me. You can call me personally, personally or you can share your queries with me. Right everyone? So do read your book, underline the important points, 
don't forget to understand the meaning of uh, the words which are highlighted in black okay so that's all for today everyone bye